All right, it's time for the distance and midpoint formulas. Now, the funny part about these formulas is when you look at the actual formula, it looks like a lot to try to memorize. But if you think about how it works, it's really not that bad. Okay, so you, you can stay focused here and get this down. Uh, it's going to be much easier than you think. First things first with the distance formula. Um, if it's on a number line, it's pretty straightforward. All it says is the distance is the absolute value of the difference. Uh, so for example, let's say P is at negative 3 and Q is at 8. No matter which way I subtract these two guys, 8 minus negative 3 or negative 3 minus 8, I got to take the absolute value of them because I can't have a negative distance. So that's 11. This would be negative 11 and the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. Okay, so it gets the same thing. So no matter which way you subtract, a distance has to be positive. It can never be negative. Yeah. First off with the distance formula, basically finding the distance between any two points. So I'm going to find the distance of this line, and this is going to give me my distance formula. So my first point is x1, y1, just saying it's my first point, x, y, x2, y2 is my second point. Well, this is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. So let me draw on a right triangle here. If I think about it, our sides on our Pythagorean theorem triangle are a, b, and c. And a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? That, that's our Pythagorean theorem. Let me write that down. c squared with a squared plus b squared. Right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to put the c squared first. Well, let's say I just wanted to find c. I want to find the distance. Okay, I'm going to replace this. I'm going to replace this with d. That's d is going to stand for distance, okay? And I just want to know what the distance is. So to get the c by itself in my equation to find the distance, I would take the square root, right, to cancel that square. So it's really c, but now I'm going to use d instead for distance. d equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And I can't square root each of those because of that plus sign. If they were being multiplied, I could. Well, let's think about this now. What could I put in place for a? How do I find a? Well, it's the distance between my x values, right? x2 minus x1. So that's really my a squared, right? So I got d equals the square root of, well, a squared is x2 minus x1, and I'm squaring it, plus, well, my b, if I look, is the distance between my y's. So y squared minus, or y2 minus y1 squared. And there we go. So I could solve for the distance of any line by using this formula. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. See, I told you, it looks like a lot, doesn't it? It looks like a lot. If I think about it, though, really, I just take the distance between my x's, I square it. I take the distance between my y's, I square it. I add the two. And then we take the square root of it. And then we take the square root of it. Okay, so let's, let's rewrite this again here. Let's erase. So to find the distance, we take the square root of, subtract my x's, x2 minus x1, square it. And then we add that to subtracting my y's, and then square it. Let's take a look at an example. So find the distance between these two points. Well, let's write our distance formula again down here. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And let's plug in our values. So whichever, this could be my first point. This could be my second point. So x2, which is 3, 3 minus negative 4. I'm going to write this one out all the way so we can see. Squared, and then we're going to add that to y2, which is negative 1, minus 1. And we square that as well. So let's simplify this. 3 minus negative 4 is really 3 plus 4, which is 7. And negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So d equals the square root of, well, 7 squared is 49. And negative 2 squared is 4. So I got 49 plus 4, which is 53. 
53. And it doesn't ask to be specific on whether you want a decimal or simplified radical form. So if I want to simplify this as a radical, I just look for perfect square factors of 53, which there aren't any, and there's no units, so the distance is the square root of 53. Or I could type this into a calculator and round it, in which I would get approximately 7.3. So either one's fine. Either one's fine, if I'm not being specific. I'd, I'd do with a square root, just to get used to simplifying radicals. Uh, but it's up to you. So just plug it into our distance formula. I'm going to show you my shortcut way. Okay, This is how I do the distance formula. I'll write the distance formula here just so we can see it. Right? x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so to find the distance, this is how I think about it. I take the square root. Well, I subtract my x's. So the difference between my x's. Well, how far are 4 and negative 3 apart? They're 7 apart, aren't they? So 7 squared. Well, then I look. y squared minus, or y2 minus y1 is the distance between my y's. How far are 3 and negative 7 apart? Well, they're 10 apart, right? So I take 10 squared. And what do I do with these two things? I add them. There's my shortcut instead of having to write all that out. Just think about how far apart your x's are and how far apart your y's are, the difference between the two, right? And I can simplify. 49 plus 100. D equals the square root of 149. And I can see if there's perfect squares of that. Um, but in this case, I do not believe there are. So what we do is we either leave it like that, or I can say it's approximately 12.2. Either way, I'm OK with either answer. Square root of 49 or 12.2 would be the distance between those two points. One other thing, I could try to find one of the points given the distance. So for example here, find the possible values for r. Actually, I'm going to use r here. If the distance between points at 2, negative 1, and r, negative 4, is 5 units. Okay, so this is where I actually have to know my distance formula. So I'm going to plug in values. So x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's start plugging in things. I know the distance is 5. The square root of, well, either r minus 2 or 2 minus r. I'm going to go r minus 2 squared, right? Distance between my x's. Plus y2. Since I put r first, got to put negative 4 first here. Minus negative 1, which is really plus 1. Yeah, I'm going to switch that up right away. And now let's start simplifying. Well, I know inside of here is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, let me rewrite this here. So I got 5 equals the square root of r minus 2 squared plus 9. Oof, I can't do anything. And the variable I'm trying to solve for is underneath the radical, isn't it? So I'm going to get rid of this radical. Well, we just dealt with that before in the last section. We got to square both sides to get rid of the radical. So we got 25 equals r minus 2 squared plus 9. Well, I got this r in the parentheses. I can't can't have it in the parentheses. So let's get it out of there. So I either get, I got to rewrite this r minus 2 and go r minus 2 times r minus 2. Or if you remember how to get that into a perfect square trinomial, you can do that as well. I square the first term. I square the second term. Positive 4. I multiply the 2, so r times negative 2, which is negative 2r, and I double it for a minus 4r. And i got to add a 9 at the end. Uh-oh, if you take a look, I have a quadratic, don't I? I have a variable squared, so I better get this guy equal to 0. Well, let's combine the 4 and the 9 for a 13, and let's subtract our 25 over. So i got a minus 25 from both sides. And I'm going to rewrite this up here. So now I got 0 on the left side. I got an r squared minus 4r. And 13 minus 25 gives us negative 12. It's a lot of work, isn't it? So now I got to find factors in negative 12 that add up to negative 4. And if I think about that, I got negative 6 and a positive 2. 
So now this factors into r minus 6 and r plus 2. So what does r equal? It could be a 6 or it could be a negative 2. And we're good. And I don't need to plug back in to check up here because um, either a 6 or a negative 2 would work plugging in for r. It's not like I'm testing underneath a radical or anything. So r could be 6 or negative 2. So it takes a lot of work, doesn't it? We're just using things that we already know, but just take some time. Midpoint formula, you're going to feel much better about this. This goes a lot quicker. Midpoint, think average. Think average, okay? So if I'm given two points, it's basically just the average of the two points. Well, how do you find the average of something? You add them up, then divide by how many there are. So if I look at this to find this midpoint right here, I'm going to write it nice and big, okay? I take the average of my x's right away. So x2 plus x1, x sub 2 plus x sub 1, and I divide by 2 because there's two of them, right? Add them up, divide by 2. Then I find the average of my y's. Add them up, y2 plus y1, and divide by 2 because there's two points. Add them up, divide by 2. Find the average of them. And there you go. That's how you find the midpoint. So add your x's. Divide by 2, add your y's, divide by 2. Pretty straightforward. Let's just look at a couple examples. I can do this nice and quick. So find the correlates of the midpoint. Well, it's the average of the x's. So negative 4 plus 8 divided by 2, and the average of the y's. Negative 1 plus negative 3 over 2, which gives us what? 4 over 2 and negative 4 over 2. And we should simplify so 2, negative 2. Done. Pretty straightforward, right? Find the average of your x's, 6 plus 3, divided by 2, and the average of your y's, 8 plus 4, divided by 2. If I get a fraction, let's just leave it as 9 over 2. Um, you can write 4.5 or 4.5, but 9 over 2 is just fine. And 12 over 2. So we got 9 over 2 and 6 for our point. There you go. So midpoint, much better, much better. All right, got a few problems. Um, good luck to you. Deuce.